Cenobitic or Coenobitic monasticism is a monastic tradition that stresses community life. Often in the West the community belongs to a religious order, and the life of the Cenobitic monk is regulated by a religious rule, a collection of precepts. The older style of monasticism, to live as a hermit, is called Eremitic. A third form of monasticism, found primarily in Eastern Christianity, is the sket. The English words, Cenobite, and Cenobitic, are derived, via Latin, from the Greek words koinos, common, and bios, but life. The adjective can also be cenobiac, koinobiakos koinobiakos. A group of monks living in community is often referred to as a cenobium. Cenobitic monasticism exists in various religions, although Buddhist and Christian Cenobitic monasticism are the most prominent. Origins <inaudible> 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 The word Cenobites was initially applied to the followers of Pythagoras in Cretona, Italy, who founded a commune not just for philosophical study but also for the "...amicable sharing of worldly goods". Judaic monasticism In the 1st century AD, Philo of Alexandria c. 25 BC, c. 50 AD describes a Jewish ascetic community of men and women on the shores of Lake Mariatis in the vicinity of Alexandria, Egypt which he calls the Therapeutae. Members of the community lived apart from one another during the six days of the week, studying the Hebrew Bible during the daytime and eating during the evening, whereafter they hoped to dream visions informed by their studies. Members of the community composed books of Midrash, an allegorical method for interpreting scripture. Only on the Sabbath would the Therapeutae meet, share their learning, eat a common, albeit simple, meal of bread and spring water, and listen to a lecture on the Torah given by one of the venerable members of the community. Every seventh Sabbath was accorded a festival of learning and singing, which climaxed in an egalitarian dance. The 3rd century Christian writer Eusebius of Caesarea c. 263-339, in his Ecclesiastical History, identified Philo's Therapeutae as the first Christian monks, identifying their renunciation of property, chastity, fasting, and solitary lives with the Cenobitic ideal of the Christian monks. <laughs> Christian monasticism the organized version of Christian Cenobitic monasticism is commonly thought to have started in Egypt in the 4th century AD. Christian monks of previous centuries were usually hermits, especially in the Middle East. This continued to be very common until the decline of Aramean Christianity in the late Middle Ages. This form of solitary living, however, did not suit everyone. Some monks found the Eremitic style to be too lonely and difficult, and if one was not spiritually prepared, the life could lead to mental breakdowns. For this reason, organized monastic communities were established so that monks could have more support in their spiritual struggle. While Eremitic monks did have an element of socializing, since they would meet once a week to pray together, Cenobitic monks came together for common prayer on a more regular basis. The Cenobitic monks also practiced more socializing because the monasteries where they lived were often located in or near inhabited villages. For example, the Boharic version of Dionysus Exiguus The Life of St. Pahomius states that the monks of the monastery of Tabena built a church for the villagers of the nearby town of the same name even before they constructed one for themselves. This means that Cenobitic monks did find themselves in contact with other people, including lay people, whereas the Eremitic monks tried their best to keep to themselves, only meeting for prayer occasionally. St. Pahomius Cenobitic monks were also different from their Eremitic predecessors and counterparts in their actual living arrangements. Whereas the Eremitic monks Hermits lived alone in a monastery consisting of merely a hut or cave. Cell. The Cenobitic monks, Cenobites, lived together in monasteries comprising one or a complex of several buildings. In the latter case, each dwelling would house about 20 monks, and within the house there were separate rooms or cells that would be inhabited by two or three monks. This structure of living for the Cenobitic monks has been attributed to the same man that is usually hailed as the father of Cenobitic monasticism, St. Pahomius. 
Pahomius is thought to have got the idea for living quarters like these from the time he spent in the Roman army, as the style is very reminiscent of army barracks, though Pahomius is often credited as the father of Cenobitic monasticism. It is more accurate to think of him as the father of organized Cenobitic monasticism, as he was the first monk to take smaller communal groups that often already existed and bring them together into a larger federation of monasteries. The account of how Pahomius was given the idea to start a Cenobitic monastery is found in Palladius of Galatia. S. The Lausiac History, which says that an angel conveyed the idea to him. Though this is an interesting explanation of why he decided to initiate the Cenobitic tradition, there are sources that indicate there were already other communal monastic communities around at that time and possibly before him. In fact, three of the nine monasteries that joined Pahomius's Cenobitic federation were not founded by him, meaning he actually was not the first to have such an idea since these three clearly had an independent origin. Though he was not the first to implement communal monasticism, Pahomius is still an important part of Cenobitic monastic history, since he was the first to bring separate monasteries together into a more organized structure. This is the reason why, as well as the fact that much hagiography and literature has been written about him, he has continued to be recognized as the father of the tradition. <laughs> Miletians and Manichaeans Topic. Aside from the monasteries that joined Pahomius's federation of Cenobitic monasteries, there were also other Cenobitic groups, both Christian and non-Christian, who decided not to join him. The Miletians and the Manichaeans are examples of these Cenobitic groups. Even before Pahomius had started on his path toward monastic communities, the Miletians as a group were already recruiting members. The Miletians were a heretical Christian sect founded by Miletius of Lycopolis. Moreover, they had heard of Pahomius's monastic aspirations and tried to recruit him to join their community. As for Manichaeans, members of a religion founded by a man named Mani, some scholars believe they were the pioneers of communal asceticism in Egypt, and not Pahomius and the Pahomians, as has become the common thought. Mani, himself, was actually influenced to begin Cenobitic monasticism from other groups, including Buddhists and Jewish Christian Elkasites who were practicing this tradition already. The overall idea of Cenobitic monasticism cannot be traced to a single source, however, but rather developed from the ideas and work of numerous groups, including the aforementioned Miletians, Manichaeans, Elkasites, Buddhists and Pahomians. Topic later Cenobitic communities Topic The Cenobitic monastic idea did not end with these early groups, though, but rather inspired future groups and individuals. Mar Agin founded a monastery on Mount Isla above Nisibis in Mesopotamia, approximately 350, and from this monastery the Cenobitic tradition spread in Mesopotamia, Persia, Armenia, Georgia, and even India and China. Mar Saba organized the monks of the Judean desert in a monastery close to Bethlehem 483, and this is considered the mother of all monasteries of the Eastern Orthodox churches. Saint Benedict of Nursia founded the monastery of Monte Cassino in Italy 529, which was the seat of Roman Catholic monasticism in general, and of the Order of Benedict in particular. Saint Bruno of Carthusia, prompted by the specter of the damnation of the good doctor of Paris Senodoxus founded a monastery just outside Paris in the 11th century. In both the East and the West, Cenobiticism established itself as the primary form of monasticism, with many foundations being richly endowed by rulers and nobles. The excessive acquisition of wealth and property led to several attempts at reform, such as Bernard of Clairvaux in the West and Nihilus of Sora in the East. Topic see also topic Hermitage, Eremitic monasticism Intentional community Lavra, early form of monasticism Shenset Chenobowskian, place in Egypt with a monastery dedicated to St. Pahomius Sket, form of monastic community in Eastern Christianity Specific mention and detail of Cenobitic order and customs referred to in this series of fiction by Susan Howich in the Starbridge series. Topic notes topic topic References topic Atridge, Harold W. and Gohei Hada. The Origins of Monasticism in Ascetics, Society, and the Desert, Studies in Egyptian Monasticism. Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, Trinity Press International, 1999. Dunn, Marilyn. The Emergence of Monasticism, From the Desert Fathers to the Early Middle Ages. Malden, Mass., Blackwell Publishers, 2000. Goring, James E. Withdrawing from the Desert, Pahomius and the Development of Village Monasticism in Upper Egypt, Harvard Theological Review 89, 1996, 267-285. 
Halsell, Paul. Chapter 32, Pahomius and Tabanesiates in Palladius, The Lausiac History. September 1998. Internet Medieval Sourcebook. 30 March 2007. Harmless, William, S. J. Chapter 5, Pahomius in Desert Christians, An Introduction to the Literature of Early Monasticism. New York, Oxford University Press, 2004. Lawrence, C. H. Chapter 1, The Call of the Desert in Medieval Monasticism, 3rd edition. Toronto, Pearson Education Limited, 2001. Topic. External links Topic. 